Here is our podcast for Standard 1.1, which is all about the chemistry of life. So in this podcast, we're going to recognize that organisms are made up of actually very few elements, and these mostly are the most common ones are carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur. So from this particular standard, you should be able to identify those elements by their symbol. You should be able to tell the difference between an atom, an element, and a molecular compound, and say how they're related to each other. And you will be able to answer the question as to why carbon is central to all life. So the essential vocabulary that we will see in this unit is, is here. Um, we'll go over many of these words as we go through the PowerPoint. So when we talk about chemistry, we are actually talking about the scientific study of matter. So we're going to take a look at the structure of matter, properties, reactions that happen with the different elements. And matter, remember, is anything that takes up space um, and has mass. Now we study chemistry even though you guys are in biology because chemistry is essential for living things because living things are made up of matter. And so lots of different chemical reactions have to occur in order to keep something alive and um, you are made up of the different chemicals and we study those different chemicals. Okay. So matter is anything, like I said, that takes up space and has mass. And matter is composed of the various elements. Um, and when we talk about our elements of life, like I said there are six major elements. So the basic unit of matter is the atom. Um, and we've, you've probably learned about atoms a little bit. There's a nucleus inside of the atom, and then you have um, electrons that go around the outside, and those give certain properties to the different atoms. So when we talk about elements, um, an element is a substance that cannot be broken down into anything simpler by any kind of chemical means. So an element is composed of atoms that have the same atomic number. So elements are all the same kind of atoms that all have the same atomic number. So the atomic number is their number of protons. Okay, so on all the um, atoms that have the same number of protons belong to a certain type of element. So there are 118 known elements um, today in the periodic table. And when we talk about elements, we will identify them by a symbol, which is usually a letter or letters, and often those letter or letters are taken from their um, Latin names. Okay, so helium is an example. So helium's um, symbol is HE. Its atomic number is two, so that means that it has two protons in it. And all the atoms of helium have two protons in them. Anything that does not have two protons in it is not helium. So the six elements that are essential to all living things are carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur. Um, so we can see what some of them are, and their symbols are right next to them. And this is nice and easy because the symbol for each is always the first letter of the word. So that makes it super easy. So oxygen, again, we can take a look as an atomic number of eight. So that means it has eight protons. Also means it has eight electrons. Um, carbon is going to be a very important player in everything that we do. Carbon has an atomic number of six, and its atomic mass is 12. Um, and so that means that it is going to be able to make four different bonds with other things, and that's going to become a very important aspect or piece to what we're going to be talking about. So we talk about chemical bonds. Chemical bonds are going to hold atoms together. So any time that two atoms are going to stick together, they get attracted to each other, kind of like magnets sticking together. Um, and the chemical bonds are going to involve the electrons that are going to surround the atom. So the number of protons is the same as the number of electrons. However many electrons are there, that's how many are going to be involved with making the bond. So ionic bonds involve a transfer of electrons between atoms. So you can see over here we have a um, ionic bond that is showing. So this atom here has this electron and it's going to actually give it to this atom. And then that makes them bonded together. Covalent bonds are when the uh, electrons are going to be shared between two atoms. So both of them these two atoms here are going to actually end up sharing and both benefiting from having those two electrons in the middle, and that is a covalent bond. Okay, so when uh, molecules are going to bond together and different atoms bond together, we will end up making a molecular compound. So a couple ways to define this 
a group of atoms that are held together chemically through different kinds of bonds, a group of molecules that can be broken down by means of a chemical reaction. So you can take different kinds of molecules, like water molecules mixed with hydrogen molecules, and you can break them down into their simpler components. Um, and that is also within our definition of molecular compound. So an example of a molecule of water is H2O. So it has one oxygen and two hydrogen. So the two that comes down here in the subscript means that that's multiplying the hydrogen by two. There's nothing there for the oxygen, so that's a one. So that water or molecule consists of one oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms. So it's a group of atoms that are held together chemically. Sugar is another example, and a sugar molecule can actually get broken down into carbon dioxide and water by a chemical reaction. So that's different molecules that are actually come together to make a specific compound that can then be broken down. And the reaction that that happens by is called cellular respiration. We'll talk about that later in the year. All right, so sometimes when we do bonding, we end up with special kinds of um, molecules called ions. So an atom or a molecule that ends up having a positive or a negative charge is the definition of an ion. And this will happen because of a gaining or loss of electrons. Some common ions that we will talk about in biology, you have hydrogen ions, sodium ions, chlorine ions, which are negative, and hydroxide, which is actually a combination of oxygen and hydrogen together. And together they have an overall negative charge. Okay. So ionic compounds, the way that they get made um, is where their opposite attract, uh, charges are going to attract to each other. So a very common ionic compound is salt, sodium chloride. Sodium is positive, chlorine is negative, and so they will get attracted to each other because sodium has one extra electron in its outer energy level, and it's going to give that electron to the chlorine molecule. And in doing so, they end up being bonded together. Okay, that's your ionic bond right there. Okay, a very important molecule that we're going to talk about a lot this year is water. Water is the most abundant molecule in all living organisms. Over 75% of your body is water. Okay, has special traits that make it very important to life. And there's some special things that water can do that will make it's um, really good at dissolving substances. So again, we talked about how water is an oxygen molecule and two hydrogen molecules. And when they bond together through a covalent bond, um, you actually get what looks like Mickey Mouse ears in the end. What happens here is water ends up being something called a polar molecule. It's slightly positive on one side and slightly negative on the other. So the polar bonds that happen between the oxygen and hydrogen atoms actually make the oxygen side slightly negative and the hydrogen sides slightly positive. Now this isn't like strong positive and negative like in ions, but it's a slight positive negative type of reaction. And so when you put any kind of substance into water that has any kind of charge, it will dissolve really, really easily into that water. So water can dissociate or separate into its hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. When it does that, we get our hydrogen ions and our hydroxide ions, that it will do that sometimes when it is dissolving substances. Um, and when we do that, we can end up with changes in pH. So acids are molecules that will release hydrogen ions in solution. Okay, hydro, um, hydrochloric acid is an example. So when you put hydrochloric acid into water, it will separate, dissociate into hydrogen ions and chlorine ions. Okay. Bases are molecules that are going to either take up hydrogen ions or release hydroxide ions. So sodium hydroxide, when you pour it into water, it'll separate the sodium from the hydroxide. Okay. And that is considered a base when it has a bunch of hydroxide ions on it. And we can look at our concentration of hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions um, on a pH scale. So the more hydrogen ions are in a solution, if there's more hydrogen ions than hydroxide ions, you are an acid. And acids, the strongest acid would be down at pH 0, which would be hydrochloric acid. Your stomach acid is between pHs 1 and 2, so lots of hydrogen ions. As you get closer to neutral, the number of hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions is the same. 
And then, as the number of hydrogen ions goes down, you become more and more basic. And the strongest base is at pH 14. Here we can look at what pH looks like in a beaker of water. So if we click on this beaker of water, we can see that the number of hydroxide ions and the number of hydrogen ions is the same. So if we were to test the pH of this, our pH would come out at neutral, which is 7. Now if we add acid to this solution, you can see that the pH is going to go down. And what this actually looks like inside the beaker is that you have many more hydrogen ions than you do hydroxide ions. Whereas if we took our neutral uh, solution and we added base to it, you can see that the pH number is going up. And what's going to actually happen is now we have more hydroxide ions than we do hydrogen ions, and that is considered a base. All right, the last thing we're going to talk about in here is carbon. Carbon is the element that is essential to all living things. Um, everything that is alive is made up of carbon-containing molecules. The reason for this is carbon can easily bond with itself and with other atoms. It actually has the ability to form four covalent bonds, so it makes four really strong bonds. Carbon is, because it can bond with itself and lots of other atoms, it is found in many large complex compounds, and these compounds are called organic molecules. And in Standard 1.2, we're going to talk about the organic molecules. Now, the ones, the other atoms that carbon likes to bond with are the ones that are part of our six essential. And we can sometimes remember them by saying CHINOPS. That's one of the acronyms that I've used. Some people like to say New Hampshire cops. But these molecules are the ones that make up organic molecules. These are the ones that make up our organic molecules. Nitrogen, hydrogen, carbon, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur.